This week on Check Please South Florida, creative tacos and homemade salsas made for a food fiesta in Parkland. That infusion of flavors out of sight. Handmade dumplings and classic Cantonese comfort food in Pembroke Pines. Authentic experience that you didn't get to have like everywhere. And party like a Palm Beacher at this upscale steakhouse in Delray Beach. It's delicious. It's the star of the evening. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world. Additional funding for Check Please South Florida is provided by George and Helen Weaver and the Friends of South Florida PBS. I was actually really surprised by how tasty it was. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. It was nothing like I've ever had before. It feels like a taste of Florida. It was the size of a bathtub. Hello, I'm Michelle Bernstein, and welcome to Check Please South Florida, the show where regular people from all over South Florida recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and then the other two go to check them out and see what they think. This week, when communications professional Juan Allen craves Chinese comfort food, he leaves the high-tech world behind and leans toward classic Cantonese dishes. He says whether you're looking for an authentic, handmade dim sum or a banquet-style feast for the family, this casual spot in western Broward County will not disappoint. And food and culture writer Arlene Borenstein reports that her choice for modern steak and seafood dishes may be pricey, but you get what you pay for. Boasting dry-aged and wet-aged meats, an impressive seafood fish selection, and even lighter fare for the healthy eater, she assures us her stylish pick always has something for everyone. But first, director of sales Glenn Geringer has a lead for creative, chef-driven Mexican food in Northwest Broward. At this neighborhood taco joint, you can choose your own adventure, mixing and matching proteins piled high in tortillas or bowls. And it's in Parkland, and it's called Los Bocados. Robbie Bushman, I'm the co-founder of Los Bocados here. My name is Anthony Hoff, and I'm the co-founder of Los Bocados. Anthony and I met at a bar. We were sitting there talking. I was training and studying to uh, open up my own personal chef business. And I called Anthony one day, and I said, hey, remember I never went to open a restaurant? I think we should open a restaurant. We uh, have a, you know, traditional Mexican ingredients, traditional Mexican dishes in some regard, but our own technical way of making them in a unique twist on the actual techniques of how we're making the, the recipes. Parkland, when, uh, where we opened our first store was 152 steps uh, north of here. You know, so we've been a part of this community since the beginning and I knew uh, growing up here in Coral Springs and in Boca how community first and how good, humble people lived out here in Parkland and it was just a great spot, I thought, to open a, a family kind of business that me and Anthony had going after it and the community has been so supportive of us and we've tried to support them back. Los Bocados is fresh. Los Bocados is chef-driven, Los Bocados is about the community, and Los Bocados is delicious. You've been there a lot. Uh, twice a month, wow. uh, okay. sometimes more. My kids mm -hmm. love it, uh, my wife loves it. I have yet to have a bad experience there. Hmm. Used to be in a gas station. I know. But they've moved to the now their own store, so they're doing really well. I think they're I very popular. To know the chef. Do you know yeah, him? Yeah, his name is Gino, and we've known each other a very long time, and he is so talented. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really nice people, too. So yeah. what did you have this last time you were there? Uh, something I never had before. They're mahi tacos. Grilled or fried? They are fried. You okay. can get them grilled, though, or black, and we got but them fried. But why bother if you R get them fried? They were so good. <laughs> <laughs> they were really were. You have that spicy slaw? The spicy slaw there is incredible. They put mm. it on so many of the dishes. They also have these mm. things called hongolitos, and they're mushroom quesadillas. 
Uh, ongalitos. Ongalitos. Like, ongalitos. 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 Right. No, you're perfect. You're yeah. perfect. But ongos meaning mushrooms. Right. Small quesadillas. There's okay. two of them. Uh -huh. And they have a little bit of a smoky uh, aioli with it. Did you try that as well? I uh -huh. had the ongo tacos. I'm nodding because it was so good. <laughs> was it? Yeah. I, I usually tend to go for like the meat or the chicken. Oh. I'm going to say, let me try the mushrooms because, you know, I love mushrooms too. And it just blew me away. It was so good. That's why I'm like, yes, right on. Can I tell you, <laughs> mushroom tacos are probably, if they're done well, they're probably my favorite. I think I'd rather them over meat. Is it's that so weird? so flavorful. I have done a lot. It's so yeah. flavorful. It soaks in everything you put into the taco. Mm. And then I had the birilla, because I'm a big fan of birilla tacos. Mm -hmm. Birilla is a broth that you can actually dip your taco in. So You had that right one? Yeah, yes. the birilla tacos yeah. are amazing. That broth, it's, you had that too. it's yeah. really flavorful. What really made it stand out is they lightly fry the shell of the berilla taco, so you get that nice crunch with that brothy stew, and really good. Yeah. What else? So you had the berilla, mm -hmm. you had the hongo, mm -hmm. what was the And nice? then I had the guajiro or something, chicken. Yeah. Guajillo, probably. Guajillo, guajillo. For the chili. For the, guajillo. Yeah. Right. And He's not a guajiro. Yeah, there, guajiro. there you go. I'm like, I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> but it was delicious. The, you know, the crunch of the slaw, everything's crispy or crunchy where you want it. Not over the top spicy, but you know, those three tacos was enough for a meal. You wrote a lot about the salsa. The salsa, I could have had like 10 of those salsas. <laughs> and I'm picky about my salsa. It had an addicting quality that when I put in the nacho chips, which right. by the way, have a little seasoning on them. So uh -huh. that's a nice special little touch. Mm -hmm. It was just like, well, what was that? It was amazing. <laughs> and you you know, I wasn't expecting more. such yeah. a flavorful hit from, from the salsa. Yeah. Juan, what else did you have? I also had the um, carne asada tacos, mm -hmm. but I have lived in Mexico for three years. Okay. And I know a lot of Mexican food and street food. And this food has like a twist. You have a chef uh, behind this. Right, of there's course. like extra flavors. Everything right. has a twist. Yeah. I cannot eat gluten, so Mexican food, it's amazing <laughs> because right. corn tortillas, it, it doesn't have gluten, so no, it does not. it's amazing. And it comes with a sauce that when you put it in your mouth, it melts like everything. So Glenn, I mean, this is a fast casual place, exactly. right? Exactly. It's not about the decor, it's about the food. You pretty much, if you, if you have more than two people, it's going to be hard to get a table. Okay. So we usually go down to the park and picnic. They have a burrito menu, it's like four or five of them. Uh, my son loves the spicy citrus pork. That's his favorite, and my daughter loves the carne asada. So there's, mm -hmm. everybody has their own dish, mm -hmm. but you can mix and match, uh, like in the burritos, I get the hungos, mm -hmm. I get them mixed in with the beef sometimes. Oh, okay. And so they'll do that mm -hmm. with no problems. But uh, they have a taco menu, they have quesadillas, and then you can get a bowl and put salad in it or rice. Oh, great. And they have a cilantro rice that's really tasty. Is it green? Yeah, it's got I little specks that. of greens in it. Yeah, it's really delicious. delicious. They're, They're very so good. You brought your whole family. What did the kids think? Um, my kids, they loved it. They had the quesadillas. Um, yeah, and they, uh, they, they also had at the counter for dessert, they have like, uh, like chocolate chip cookies. They were like... They were fans. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn, Los Bocanos was your choice. Sum it up for me, please. Unique, and I think you, you know, anyone who's been there always enjoys it. Arlene? You're probably not going to get what you might think of a, an authentic Mexican experience. There's the twist, but the twist is what makes it so good, that infusion of flavors out of sight. Juan? You have everything for everyone in the menu, um, and you can enjoy it with your family. Well, you can build the perfect bite at Los Bocados, located at 7031 North State Road 7 in Parkland, with an additional location in Boca Raton. Open daily for lunch and dinner, reservations are not accepted, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $30. There are so many beautiful tacos in the world, but I bet none of you have made them with a little bit of mezcal. You can sip it as you make the tacos. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I've decided to use ghee because it has a higher smoking point. It's basically clarified butter. So for mushrooms, I've got cremini, shiitake, and oyster. Now, if you can only get one kind of mushroom, it's okay. For the flavor, we've got some very tiny minced shallots, I have some very finely minced garlic. I have a combination of cilantro and parsley, but I also like harder herbs, and that would be here thyme, as well as a little bit of rosemary. Just like so. 
So let's go ahead and flip around our mushrooms a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and cook the tortillas. So I added a little bit of that ghee to the pan, flip it over, and then I'm just gonna add some cheese. Now this is just some simple Mexican white grated cheese, but let's go ahead and let that melt. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and season the salt and pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and add some shallot to this, as well as just a little bit of this garlic, not all of it, and keep flipping. So check out our tortilla. The cheese has melted. We're gonna go ahead and place that right on the plate. All right, I'm gonna add my thyme and rosemary. You should always add your hard herbs first. We're at the point with our mushrooms that we are ready for our mezcal. And now we have a crazy smoky smell. It's just a delicious fragrance. To finish off the mushroom, a little bit of cilantro parsley. And our mushrooms are ready to serve. Fill up your quesadilla nicely. And to go with it, my favorite salsa verde. It's definitely a little bit spicy and delicious. Bueno, provecho. Here you have your mushroom tacos with a little bit of fiery mezcal. Now fire up the wok and pour the hot tea because communications professional Juan Allen is here to present his choice for traditional Chinese comfort food and Broward. From the Peking duck to the dumplings and bao buns, yum. He says you're sure to find a favorite dish on the expansive menu. It's in Pembroke Pines and it's called Gold Marquee. My name is Phil Verde, and I am the owner of Gold Marquez. The idea for Gold Marquez came about uh, in 2015. We saw a market for creating a large space for banquet halls, and we also saw a market for dim sum during lunch. Our most popular dishes in this restaurant is the Peking duck. Uh, we also serve uh, several different dumplings, uh, including the hakao, the siu mai, uh, chicken feet as well, and pork ribs. And the other famous dish is the uh, Marquez fried rice. When our customers come here, we want them to feel like they're part of our family. Most of our tables are round tables. It gives an inclusion to all families and friends that come here. We invite all guests to come to Gourmet Orquest to experience a traditional meal, as well as to have fun with your family and friends. Juan, I have to tell you something. I order from them a lot. I'm very happy you brought this to us today. So tell nice. me about Gold Marquez. It's an authentic Cantonese uh, restaurant. It's from a Chinese family, so they really know what they do. They have like an expanded menu. Do they always have dim sum any yeah. time of day? They have dim sum carts until 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. So they only do the carts during the day, like yeah. a brunch or lunch thing? Yes. Got it. We came at like 6.15 on a Wednesday. There was no dim sum at all, and that was what we were excited about. <laughs> mm. I worked in China for a long time, and yeah. I only ate dim sum for brunch. It's like uh, Spanish tapas, like small plates. Uh, they're great for brunch, and, and of course to share, because you, mm -hmm. get, you get these bamboo baskets with the dumplings, mm -hmm. and you get a chuchusa from a lot of different varieties of these dumplings. You had dim sum, right? I did have dim sum. Mm -hmm. I had the dim sum sampler. So there was different types of dim sum. Mm -hmm. So there was the bao buns and- So you don't get to choose. No, okay. I didn't see a cart or anything like that. I went on mm -hmm. a Friday night. I liked the dim sum. I think the buns could have been a little hotter and could have had a little bit more pork inside. I just felt like maybe this wasn't a super fresh batch, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was yummy. Yeah. I was also with my son and my mom. So that's a tough combination. So I was like, let's, let's try to 
Let's get her done. Yeah, let's, let's get these dim yeah. sum in. Okay. I just know did that you try it probably that, wasn't their best. Did you try any of the dinner food that wasn't? I did. I, did. Okay. I had to try their gold marquee signature fried rice. Uh -huh. And it was interesting because there was actually a little spice to it. It was a little crispier than a typical fried rice. So I thought it was good. You know, it had a little bit of that addictive quality. But for me, what stuck out the most was their service. I didn't see a kid's menu. Uh, so I got mm. my son a soup and the ladies, you know, she said, you know, the soups are really big and I said, well, he loves soup. So, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah. Here comes this soup, you know, <laughs> massive. So she had already thought to bring out three different bowls. So she gave a little bit to my mom, a little bit to me and, and to my son and she served it right there at the table. Mm -hmm. I thought that was outstanding. And oftentimes you, when you have a to-go box, they just give you the to-go to box, which is fine. But she actually packed the to-go box with the extra fried rice. What did you think? We were mm -hmm. the only people in the restaurant. Um, it wasn't, I don't know, maybe it was an off night. I don't want to, but I went with my wife, my daughter, and my wife's aunt and uncle. So there was, we tried to get a variety of things to try. And just, you know, some of the things were a little different. Like my wife loves Singapore rice noodles with the mm -hmm, curry. Mm -hmm. And they had little shrimp in it, but they also had spam in it. We got the shrimp kung pao. Mm -hmm. The shrimp were excellent. Fresh, they, those were delicious. We got soup dumplings and they were good. That is one of the delicacies that we love. We go anywhere for soup dumplings. How and so not? we're, yeah, it's exactly. Like the best. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> they're so good. Oh. I've only so. had them in, in New York, honestly, so I'm very spoiled. Right, and that's, yeah. we're from New York, <laughs> yeah. so that's but like when it, we go there, yeah. we always go out of our way Try to Try having them. them in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, <laughs> other <laughs> level. Can't Have Don't you had the soup dumplings there? Yeah, of course. It's uh, one of the signature dim sum dumplings that they have. You did <laughs> yeah. order one thing they're known for is the Peking duck. Yeah, the Peking right. duck, it comes a cart to your table with a whole Peking duck and they cut it in, like, in front of you so you get to see like all of the experience. Wow. So they start with the skin. Right, yeah. For the first course. And they cut like the meat of the Peking duck with, like, with slices. And it comes with a basket with buns, with cucumber. And a little wow. hoisin sauce, yes. right? Yes, it's amazing. It's one of their signatures, like, experience over there. You get to have, like, an authentic experience that you don't get to have, like, everywhere. Oh, man. So next yeah. time, maybe y'all can try that. We'll try I was going to say, I'll bring a bigger group. Tell me a little bit about the neighborhood. The restaurant is located in, a, in, a, in one of the main streets of Pembroke Pines. So it's easy access, a lot of parking spaces. Mm. And how are the prices? Wasn't too bad. The dinner wasn't uh, astronomical at all. Well, Juan, Gold Marquez was your choice. Sum it up for us. It's authentic, it's perfect, and it's perfect to go with your family and friends. Glenn? Uh, I would try it again. This time I know about the Peking duck, so I'll definitely order differently if I go back. Harley? <laughs> I echo the Peking duck, and I will definitely try the dim sum cart, because that would make me so happy. I love dim sum. You can order up a Chinese feast at Gold Marquess, located at 8252 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines, with an additional location in Miami's Wynwood neighborhood. Open daily for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted every day except for Sunday. And the average price for dinner without drinks is about $40. And finally, food and culture writer Arlene Bornstein says she could not script a better dining experience than the one she gets at her upscale spot for steak and seafood near the beach. The busy spot located on trendy Atlantic Avenue offers up impeccable service <laughs> that is sophisticated but certainly not stuffy. It's in Delray Beach and it's called Avalon Steak and Seafood. My name is Antonello Paganuzzi. I am managing partner of Avalon Steak and Seafood in Delray Beach. I was a big fan of Atlantic Avenue for years. I've lived in Fort Lauderdale and I used to come up here and I just love the eclectic crowd that came through here. And I felt real strongly that a steak and seafood concept would do very well on the Ave. The ambiance we want to create is that we look at Atlantic Avenue as a beach resort kind of town. So when we looked at the space and looked at the town, we wanted something a little bit more airy, beachy feeling, more open. We wanted to play a little cross between Martin Vineyards, Hamptons, Key West, all in one. 
We are definitely hospitable driven first. Uh, what I mean is everyone on my staff, from the front door to the hostess to the bussers, we are all about service, service, service. And I think if there's a reputation that we have, people will tell you about the warm hospitality that we give and the food, drinks, and environment go all hand in hand together. Avalon is where you want to come for an upscale experience, still with a lot of fun, with the highest emphasis on steak and seafood, and I guarantee you, you'll walk out extremely happy. This place is busy, right? Yes, it gets really busy, but when you get in, it's very relaxing, a little seaside feel, so you're also feeling kind of relaxed and chill. The last time we went, we kind of splurged and did the tuna ribeye with some friends, and it's so great to tuna share. Tuna ribeye? What is that? I know. Does it have a bone in it? Off the bone. Okay. Peppercorn, you know, Crusty. exterior. Okay. With a peppercorn sauce, and it's just so good. It's tuna like you've never had it. It is a tuna steak, hmm. and they, they slice it for you, and you can share it. You don't feel bad after eating it, but it's definitely indulgent at the same time. Does it come with anything? So. The sides are all the carp, but I would say something I absolutely love there is the charred octopus. It's not chewy, it's not rubbery. Um, they put it with these cannellini beans and this amazing sauce. Hmm. You have that? I agree, yeah. Yummy, no, yummy. The, the <laughs> octopus was great. It was perfectly cooked. It was almost like an escarole and bean, like kind of Italian thing oh, to it. That. Exactly. It was well, so good. Yes. Yeah. So you went on a Saturday. Yeah, we went on a Saturday at 8.30. It, it was crazy. Did you wait a long time? Uh, no, the, we had a reservation. We were able to get in. They I just, had a great table outside. Okay. There were cocktails, right? A couple of old fashions, very well made, and it was a wonderful meal. What did you have? My wife and her friend, they split black cod, which they said the tasting was fine, but the fish wasn't overly cooked. It was a little undercooked. So. Well, the thing about cod is because yeah. it's so oily, Sometimes it feels like it might be a little under, but because it's so slickery. Correct. Mm -hmm. Gooey so, is how they put it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't use that right. word. Yeah. Um, yeah. But because it's so oily and slickery, it kind of feels like it might be a little under when it's not. So right. who knows? It's the oil from yeah. the coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the lobster tagliatella was fantastic. Yeah. Hmm. I, we I were fighting yeah. over it. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't have, have it well? that night, but I've had it before. Explain yeah. it to me a little fantastic. bit. It's just fantastic. And you can me? actually have it um, so that they put it on top of your steak if you want it that way. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's delicious. It's, um, it was the star of the evening. And then we had wet rub steak, and okay. I, they were taught us the differences between yes, the two of them. Yes, there is a big difference. There is definitely more of a, a roasty, nutty flavor with a dry than the wet. Yeah, well, we ended up getting the wet strip steak, and okay. it was excellent, New York strip steak. Medium rare. Any sides? Uh, we got uh, Brussels sprouts and some salads, too. Okay. Uh, had an excellent wedge <laughs> to split it for us, and then the ladies also got their Caesar salad, which they really enjoyed. Juan, you parked a bit of ways, yeah, right? You had a, it a was trek? really, really crowded. Uh, it's on a main street. I, uh, as, as you said, there's a lot of people walking. I went for a date night with my wife. It's an upscale spot, great for like anniversaries or something special. You pay what you get for. Sure. Because everything there is like, the quality is like premium and the service is great. <laughs> so for start, we had a tuna tartare. The combination between the avocado, the tuna, and the crunchy they put on the top mm -hmm. was great. Yes. Um, then we had the filet mignon. I ordered medium. I'm from Argentina, so I asked for chimichurri. <laughs> with a Did they mignon. have it? Yeah, yeah. yeah they How have. was it? Did you so, find the chimichurri to be yeah, like yeah, what you consider was, chimichurri to be? It was, it was, it was to pretty be? good, pretty oh, good. Success. Yeah, and, uh, and the meat comes with uh, like a full like garlic. Oh, a head of garlic. Yeah, a head so of you garlic. You can squeeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so yummy. Yeah, and that the, the garlic enhance like the flavor of the I bet. Of the filet mignon. With that's the appetizer good. with the tuna tartare, we order uh, white wine. It's a, an extensive wine list, so yeah. you have a, to, you have to yeah. choose from a lot of different wines. <laughs> and Arlene ordered my favorite white, which is Sancerre. Mm -hmm. So yeah. good. And it probably went beautifully with the peppercorn crusted it, tuna. It's perfect. Okay. Dessert? <laughs> Anybody? We all split uh, key lime pie. A lot of times you get the key lime pies, they make mm -hmm. them too sweet. I agree. 100%. And so I like the tartness in it. And the sweet part actually came from the ice cream that they put on the side. <laughs> Arlene, so. what do you think of service? The best. They really uh, pay attention to the details, and if you want something made differently, they're willing to do it. So I, I love the service there, I, just as much as the food. Arlene, Avalon was your pick. Sum it up for yeah. us. They do everything well from steak to seafood. Gwen? Perfect seafood, great steaks. Uh, 
great, great service, as they said. Juan, what did you think? Avalon is a great place for a special occasion, for a day night. Uh, the quality is really premium, and their team is like well prepared to answer any of the questions that you have. Well, you can splurge at Avalon Steak and Seafood, located at 110 East Atlantic Avenue in Delray Beach. Open nightly for dinner. Reservations are accepted, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $75. Well, we've had a wonderful time. I want to thank my guests, Glenn Geringer, Juan Allen, and Arlene Bornstein. For more about the restaurants and recipes featured in the show, or if you'd like to apply to be a guest reviewer, visit us at checkpleasefl.com. And as always, find us on Facebook and Instagram. Join us next time for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please South Florida. I'm Michelle Bernstein, and I will chin chin. See you all then. Salud. 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 Tomaste todo el día. Lajayam. Me quiere decir mi nombre. Lajayam. Lajayam. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world.